Hi and welcome to Soccer Scanner. Um, today I'm going to do a short video on the basics of Soccer Scanner. So when you first look at Soccer Scanner it looks really complicated. There's lots of numbers, some of them are shaded, some of them aren't shaded. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to run through the, the basics. Um, I will run a series of videos. Um, this is one of a number of them. Um, some of the others I'll cover things like how to customize Soccer Scanner. So so a scanner is now completely flexible. You can add extra data, you can remove data, you can reorder it. You can basically set it up how you want. Um, and there isn't another scanner out there that will allow you to do that level of customization. So that's that's for another day. Today, we're just gonna look at the basics of what you can see, currently see on the screen, um, how you can use the data that's out there to make much more informed decisions before you start placing a bet. So <clears throat> to do this, what I'm gonna do is, it, you can see the screen at the moment, there is a number of rows and you can see them being highlighted as I move my mouse up and down and you can see there's a number of columns. So for the basis of this demonstration, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do to get rid of it all but one row. And the reason for doing that is it just makes it a lot easier for me to explain. There's not loads of noise, you're not distracted elsewhere. So this row contains one football game. Okay, over here we've got the current time, we've got the score, and we've got the two teams, and in brackets afterwards, you've got their position in the league. We've got the name of the league, and we've got how many games we've got currently going on in that league. Okay, so for each game, you will have one row, and they will be structured exactly the same. Okay, and you'll notice, and, and we'll go across the columns in a minute, what they all mean, but what you'll notice is some of these columns are shaded dark blue. What that means is that that figure is double or more the, away, the opposition's team. So if it's dark blue, it means the home team is on top. You can see this one here is light blue because it's double or more um, the home team. Okay, so light blue means the away team, dark blue means the whole team. You may also see from time to time, attacking pressure one and attacking pressure two shaded as green. That's a good sign. That means that they're high and there's a lot of attacking intent that may well lead to a goal. Okay, so we know what the first couple of columns are. We've also got in here a tick box, which you've seen I've ticked. Uh, um, and you've also got in here a teams box. So you can put the name of a team in and it will bring that game up that, that either the first name or the surname of the team matches. Okay, so, but let's go for now, go across the columns we've got across the top. So the first two, and by the way, these columns will always be here. They will stay when you scroll up and down, put your mouse over them, you will get a tool tip. Okay, so we've got attacking pressure one and attacking pressure two. So these are two figures that are unique to Soccer Scanner. What these are telling you is how much attacking intent each team has had over the last 10 minutes. Okay, and when you put your mouse over it, you will get a graph. So we can see quite clearly from this graph that the home team have been on top for most of this game. The away team haven't really generated anything in terms of attacking intent. If we put it over attacking pressure two, it tells exactly the same story. So just from these two graphs, we can tell that the home team has been on top. They haven't managed to score. And when I look at this first graph, I'm looking for a value of over 55 for a chance of scoring. It doesn't always work like that because you get random goals. But if attacking in pressure is enough to take that over 55, then that's a good sign. You can see in this graph, it hasn't been over 55. Or if it has, it's been very close. Attacking pressure two, I look for over 15. You can see it hasn't there. So it's actually no surprise to me that the score is nil-nil. Okay. After that, we've got possession. So we've got 65 and 35. So again, that seems to follow what we've seen in the graphs that the home team are actually de dominating. We've then got shots on goal, okay? And it's shaded, so it means it's double or more the opposition. And in this case, we've had one against zero. So yes, Santa Clara have dominated the game, but actually they haven't really created that many goal scoring opportunities. Um, they have had eight shots off target and they have had five shots in the box, which are the, what these two of the columns are, but they've only managed one of those that's got on target. So in theory, the goalkeeper has really only had one save to make in 45 minutes. We then go further down, we've got dangerous attacks. So yes, they have generated a lot more dangerous attacks. And attacks wise, you know, there's not a huge difference between the teams. Likewise with corners, yellow cards, just show how bad or good the game is in terms of, uh, of conduct and whether anybody's been booked. And if a red card occurs, you will see the number come up and it will be shaded red to stand out. 
So that gives you the basic of what's going on in this game. For my personal opinion is shots on target are really important. I do know the people who use the scanner who work much more on shots on the box. So it, it's your own preference and you will learn over time. Um, one of the good things that Soccer Scanner does when you start setting alerts up, it will allow you to look back over those alerts and it will tell you these statistics at the time of the alert. So you can actually, you know, tweak your alerts and, and tweak what you're looking for. Now, what you'll notice here is, and this is a great example, is that we've played 45 minutes. In brackets is the amount of injury time. So we've got four minutes of injury time and it says plus one. So we're playing the first minute of injury time. So this is, a, again, really good indication when you get a game, particularly in VAR, where you've got five, six, seven minutes over time. That's quite a long period of time if a team is pushing to get a goal. Um, so it's quite useful to know that and, and have that in your armory. So we know what all these figures are. We know what the two graphs are. We've got the current team's forms. And the latest game is to the left. So actually both teams lost their last game and won their game before that. And then we've got last 20 minutes. OK. Um, and what that shows us is which team has been on top and what's happened in the last 20 minutes. It's it's OK knowing that there's been one shot and target in the whole game. But what we want to know is when did it happen? You know, it could have happened if it happened in, it could have happened in the first minute could have happened in the last minute. So what this last 20 minutes is telling us is when did it actually happen? And you'll, it's probably a bad example where you've only got one shot on target, but we can see here that of the shots off target, four of the eight occurred in the last 20 minutes. And if I right click on here, I bring up something where, again, which is unique to Sock Scanner as our context menu. I can actually look at the last five or the last 10 minutes. So if I look at the last five minutes, you can see, yes, they've had eight shots off target but only one of them has occurred in the last five minutes almost like they've settled for nil nil at half time and then go again in the second half only six of the dangerous attacks of the 33 have come in the last five minutes so it seems to have really quiet down in the last five minutes if we look at the last 10 minutes a little bit of activity in there and again we can go back to the last 20 and we can see what we've got in there so this gives you a really good indication of how a game is going, how it's progressing. As I say, we don't want to be looking at these stats thinking, oh, great, there's a chance of a goal. But actually, they happened you know, in the first minute of the match. And ever since then, nothing's happened. So use the last 5, 10 and 20 minutes. It will make your life a lot easier and it will improve your trading because you know how a game is going at that point. OK, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove all the filters. OK, and what we've gone is gone back to all of the games that we've got on the screen. So we can scroll up and down. Scrolling is really, really smooth. You know, games jump out. So this one here is jumping out at me because the away team is dominant. You know, light blue, light blue, light blue. Pretty much every field apart from yellows and reds has been dominated. And therefore, it's no surprise <laughs> that the game is 2-0 to the away team. OK, so those are the type of things that we're looking for when we look at games. You know, look at the last five minutes. Again, the team have been dominant. Look at the last 10. Look at the last 20. Look at the current stats. Use those statistics. Use the graphs to make informed decisions. So let's have a look at the graph on that. Again, no surprise to see the away team has been on top for much of the game. So use, use the data that you've got to make informed decisions based on what you see on the screen. OK, um, other things you can do in the right click menu, you can do top leagues only. My leagues we will cover in a future video. My selected games you saw already. So what I did was I select a couple of games. I right click my selected games. It only shows me those two games. If I want to go back, remove all filters, it will still keep those two games selected for me. We've got grouping, which we will cover in a further video. We've got default filter, filters, <laughs> put my teeth in. So we've got draw, first half, second half, and high attacking pressure. So we, um, there isn't a game with high attacking pressure at the moment. If we go, let's just have a look at draw. You know, all of these games are drawing at the moment. So it, it's just a quick way to filter what's on the screen. Remember, there is, you know, on a Saturday afternoon, there can be two to three hundred games on Soccer Scanner. So having the ability to filter to look for games which you are interested in really does help you. Now, by default, all of the top leagues will be at the top. And if that's demonstrated by if I do top leagues only, there is only one game, which is the game we were looking at earlier. 
If I right click, remove all filters, we go back to where we were. Also in here, my filters. And again, we'll cover that in a later video, how to set your filters up. But once you've set them up, they're available on a button and you can apply those filters to what's on the screen. These also generate alerts, which can become via Telegram. So you can be alerted if one of these matches. Last 5, 10 and 20, we've already done. Uh, copy is quite a useful one. So copy will copy the name of the home team and the name of the away team into your machine's clipboard. So that's useful if you want to take the team names to a, um, a bookmakers or to an exchange site it just easily copies it so all you do is right click on the row that you want to copy and what that will actually do is copy the home and away team name into the clipboard and if i was to just do shift insert on there you can see it's actually copied it okay so that's a really just a little time saver the other thing you've got on here is dark mode and light mode I really like dark mode. I think it's really good. It stands out. And I know, you know, the feedback that I got since I introduced it, a lot of you are liking the dark mode as well. If I then do go back and go back to light mode. Okay, so key things to remember, it's shaded if it's double or more of the opposition. Okay, use the last 5, 10 and 20 minutes to see what's happened recently in the game. Use the right click menu if you want to do, you know, you want to select certain games you want to narrow down what you've seen on the screen okay so that's that's the basics of, of soccer scanner hopefully that's given you a flavor um, hopefully it's given you something to go away and think about and remember we offer a two-day trial okay so you sign up you get two days for free so you can see if it's for you so there is no harm signing up using it for two days trying to make use of the information and as i say use it to make better more informed decisions so there will be further videos to this we'll do some videos on adding and uh, configuring um, soccer scanner so adding and removing columns i will do some on how to create alerts i will do some how to set telegram up um, and and how to filter what you've got on the screen at the moment to to f again fit in with your your type of trading so i hope that's been useful hope you've enjoyed it um, I will put a link in the video where you can sign up to Soccer Scanner. And if you have any issues, you know, please feel free to send me an email. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you've got. Thank you for your time.